Hello everyone, welcome to Chemazon Complete Chemistry. So this is the next set of solutions that is question number 11 to 30. It is of 2 marks and there is a negative marking of 0 0.66. Okay, negative marking of 0 0.66 and they are 2 mark questions. Okay, MCQ that means only one option is correct. Let us see the first question. The geometry of the complex RE4CO16 2 minus 6. So, how do you solve this question? First step is you have to count the total valence electron. Okay, for, and after counting the total valence electron, you have to follow this table. You must remember this table. This is the total valence electron on the left hand side and the corresponding geometry. Now, how do you remember this? You can remember like this. The first three, 60, 62, 64. They are of coordination number 4. That is tetrahedral is 4 coordination number. Butterfly and then square planar. Okay, then we have just like here there is 62, 64. Next are 72 and 74. Now we come to coordination number 5. Trigonal bipyramidal 74. If the total valence electron count is 74 then it is square pyramidal. Then this 86 is very important because octahedral complexes are most common. Okay, 86 is 6 coordination number. Then we have trigonal prism 90. If it is 98, then it is cap octahedral. So here first we have to count the total valence electron. Re4, CO, 16, 2 minus. Re is belongs to D5 group. Mn, magnesium. Sorry, manganese, technetium and rhenium. So, D5S2. So, 5 plus 2, 7 electrons. So, 4 into 7 plus 1 carbonyl gives 2 electrons. Total there are 16 carbonyl plus 2 negative charges means 2 more electrons are added. 7, 4 is 28 plus 16, 2 is 30 plus 2. 28 plus 2, 30, 30 plus 32 is 62. So 62 valence electrons, what is the shape or geometry? It is butterfly. Correct answer is option B. Next one, the major product of the following reaction is. So here you can see this reactant is given. And only reactant given, first reactant is heat. Okay, the first thing where what you have to think of is an elimination reaction. Is there any elimination reaction possible here? No. Because there is no alkyl halide. Okay, alkyl halide is not present, then CO2 decarboxylation is also not possible. Second, we go on for pericyclic reaction. Okay, so in all the options, if you see, keto group is common. Okay, so somehow we have to do a reaction such that we convert this reactant to keto. How we can do that? We know that keto and enol form are in they are both what they are tautomers okay so somehow if i bring a pi bond here then i will get keto group okay now let us see what we can do pi bond pi bond ch3 ch3 on the dash bond oh here also oh Okay, so what I can do is, what we can do is, we can break this sigma bond. So this is which reaction? This is a sigma tropic reaction. Let us number 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Which reaction will be taking place? 3, 3 sigma tropic shift. Okay, 3, 3 sigma tropic rearrangement. Okay, this <clears throat> sigma bond will break, pi bond will come here, this pi bond will migrate here. What we will get? Okay, we will get CH3 OH. Here there is double bond that is formed. Okay, 1, 2 and 3. Between 3 and 3, a new sigma bond is formed. Here we have pi bond, CH3 and we have OH. Okay, now you can see there is this enol. 
in and all so what i can do i can make this enol as keto i can make this keto okay what is the next step next step is h plus acid in all the option you can see there is a ring formation okay ring formation and we know in presence of acid there is di keto group okay two keto groups are present so which reaction will take place here intramolecular aldol condensation intramolecular aldol condensation will take place how it will take place which ring formation will be the major product that we have to see now suppose i remove this this is acidic proton i make this negative 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay this is one possibility you have to remember considering the enthalpic and entropic factors experimentally it is found that five member ring is most stable then six member ring then higher member ring seven eight and so on so first you check if five member ring is formation is possible or not if not then go for six member ring if six member is also not possible at last the last option should be higher member rings like seven or eight member ring okay so this seven member ring and what is the other possibility other possibility is this is ch3 i abstract proton from here so how many member ring will be formed one two three four and five so this five member ring will be formed negative charge will attack the conjugate base will attack this carbonyl carbon this will open up let us draw the five member ring five membered ring one two three four and five first carbon there is this acetyl group c double bond o ch3 next we have two three four five at fifth position we have methyl and o minus o minus will pick up proton it becomes oh here there is one h is present so what will happen in the reaction medium acid is present <coughs> this lone pair of oxygen will pick up proton what it will become it will become oh2 plus this proton will come here and water will be released loss of water what we will get we will get a double bond will be formed here okay so you can see in the option if we see we can straight away eliminate this and c and d can be eliminated six member ring is not formed seven membered is going to be less stable so that is also not formed or even if it is formed it will be very less amount minor product a and b acetyl group acetyl group is common in both next we have double bond okay double bond okay next to double bond we have methyl here we have hydrogen here we have this methyl group so which is the correct answer option a okay option b is incorrect correct answer is option a okay next one the final product of the reaction is what <clears throat> what is the rea uh, the reactant that is given c double bond o nh2 this is amide first is we add p2o5 and heat Okay, just now i told you whenever heat is present first check the possibility of elimination reaction what is p2o5 if you don't know you cannot proceed further it is a dehydrating agent okay it is a dehydrating agent dehydration means loss of water so water will be lost okay water will be lost what is left cyanide okay. c triple bond n Okay, this was the first step. Second reagent is what? It is Grignard reagent. CH3 MgBr minus will attack this nitrogen is more electronegative delta minus. This will be delta plus. This will open up. What we will get? We will get C CH3 
टी डबल बॉन्ड एन माइनस एम जी बी आर प्लस ओके नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज वॉट वी डू हाइड्रोलिस एच थ्री ओ प्लस सॉरी वर्कअप वर्कअप वॉट विल हैपन दिस एंटायर थिंग विल बी रिमूव एंड हियर वी विल गेट सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ ओके नाउ ओनली टू स्टेप्स आर ओवर लेट मी राइट हियर C double bond O CH3. Next step is calcium hydroxide and iodine. So this is the which reaction? If you were unable to identify, it is same as NaOH and I2, which is this is which reaction? Iodo form test. Okay, for hint, it is always also written that yellow precipitate is formed. Yellow precipitate of CHI3 that is iodo form is formed. Iodoform test is given by which compounds? Compounds that have CH three CO group. So this has CH three CO group. What will happen? The CH three group will get oxidized to carboxylic acid. <coughs> C double bond O OH. Last step is heating. Heating. What will happen? This will move here. And there will be carbon ion formed here. This carbon ion will pick up this proton. There will be loss of CO2. This is called decarboxylation. What is going to be the final product? Final product will be this cyclopentane. So, what is the correct answer? Correct answer is option D. Okay, if you have marked option B, that is going to be incorrect. A is also incorrect. These are all intermediate species. Correct answer is option D. Next one for a one three butadiene system, electronic transition takes place from ground state to first excited state. The corresponding wavelength for this transition is. We have to consider one three. Uh, okay, it is here. It is butadiene, okay, not cyclo. Okay, here it is correct. One three butadiene. Okay, consider one three butadiene as particle in one D box. So this is a question from which topic? Which chapter? Quantum chemistry. Particle in a one D box. So how do we move forward? First step is we have to find out what we have to find out the wavelength. Wavelength for wavelength we have to find out the energy difference. Okay, E of higher energy minus energy of lower level. Now we have to find out which is going to be the higher energy level, or in other words, which is going to be the which is going to be the LUMO and which is going to be the HOMO. Okay, one three butadiene. This is one three butadiene. One two three four four carbon buta. First and third position there is double bond. Total how many pi electrons are present? Two plus two four pi electrons are present. How do you write down the energy levels for this? It is going to be like this. N is equal to one. N is equal to two. N is equal to three. N is equal to four. N is equal to five. Now, without filling this electron, if we have taken this as the this as the homo and this as the lumo, that is ground state and first excited state. Then your answer will be incorrect. Okay, then you will get the answer as this. This option. This is not correct. How do you find homo and lumo? Let us see. Four electrons. So fill the four electron. One, two, three, four. Now this is the highest occupied molecular orbital. So homo is what? E two. And LUMO is going to be this lowest unoccupied. It is E3. And what is the general expression for energy of a particle in a box model? E is equal to n square h square by 8 ml square. N is the quantum number. H is Planck's constant. 8 is what? 8 is constant. M is mass of the particle. L is length of the box. So here we will write higher energy level will be E3 minus E2 delta E. So this will be n square. So 3 square h square upon 8 ml square. 
minus this will be 2 square h square upon 8 ms square. Three, okay, I can take h square upon 8 ms square common. 3 square is 9, 9 minus 2 square is 4. So this will be 5 h square upon 8 ml square. Delta E I can write it as h c by lambda. Now we can cancel h and 1 h. What we want? We want wavelength. Okay, so c by lambda is what? It is 5 h by 8 ml square. Cross multiply. What will be wavelength? Wavelength will be 8 ml square c by 5 h. So which is the correct answer? Correct answer is going to be option C. Sorry, in the plot of fractional saturation, it is denoted by F versus partial pressure of oxygen. You have to find out the shapes of the curves. So this is question from bio inorganic chemistry. Okay, and always remember myoglobin has higher affinity for oxygen than hemoglobin. If you draw the graph of this, it is going to look like this. This is the fractional saturation and partial pressure of O2. So there will be two curves. One will be a higher one like this. Another is going to be a lower like this. So the higher one is for myoglobin and lower is for hemoglobin. What are the shapes? This is which shape? Hyperbolic. And this is S. S means sigmoidal. Okay, so for hemoglobin, it is sigmoidal. Sigmoidal, hyperbolic, wrong. Hyperbolic, wrong, sigmoidal. Then myoglobin, it is hyperbolic. So correct answer is this. Here both are sigmoidal. So this is not correct. Correct answer here is option A. <coughs> the vapor pressure of a liquid between 15 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius fits the expression. This is the expression that is given. We have to find out the enthalpy of vaporization. Where do we make use of enthalpy of vaporization in a glossius clapeyron equation? This is very, very important. Many times questions are asked based on this equation. Clausius Clapeyron equation. What is the general form? dp by dt is equal to dh by t dv. Now, this is nowhere close to the expression that is given. Log p is equal to some expression. So, what we have to do is we have to replace here dv. pv is equal to nrt. So, what will be v? v is equal to nrt by p. Number of moles is not given, so we will assume it to be 1. So V, we can assume it to be, we can substitute here. TV, V is what? RT by P. RT by P. DP by DT. What we can do, we can make, uh, club the similar terms together. DP, this P I can bring here. Okay, DP by P is equal to. Here on the right hand side, I have dh by rt square into dt. Okay, now what we have to do? We have to integrate dp by p, 1 by integration of 1 by p is what? Okay, even if you don't know, what is the integration of log x? Derivative of log x is what? It is 1 by x. So, if you integrate 1 by x, what we will get? Log x. So, integration of 1 by p will be what? It will be ln p. Okay, it will be ln p. And here dh by r t. dh by r is constant. Integration of 1 by t square dt. How I can do the integration of this? 1 by t square I can write it as t raised to minus 2. What is the integration of x raised to n? It is x raised to n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So integration of t raised to minus 2 will be t raised to minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1. This will be t 
raised to minus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. This minus sign I can write here. T raised to minus 1 I can write it as 1 by T. Okay, so integration of this is 1 by T. So what we have got L and P is equal to after integration dH will become delta H by R T. Okay, delta H by R T plus some constant of integration. This is minus. So this minus sign we don't have to forget. I can rearrange, rearrange this L and P is equal to C minus delta H by R T. In the question, if you see what is given, it is log is given. So we can apply log on both the sides. So we have to multiply by 2.303 log P is equal to log C minus. Sorry, we, we, we will just multiply it by 2.303 C minus delta H by R T. Okay, now this 2.303 is not present in the question. So we can divide throughout by 2.303. Okay, 2.30. This will become 2.303 RT. Okay, this will be cancelled. Now you can compare this with the given value. What is given? Log P is equal to 8.750 minus 1.625 Kelvin divided by T. This if you compare, minus sign is common and 1 by T is common in both of them. Okay, so delta H by delta H by 2.303 R is equal to 1.625 Kelvin. Okay, we want delta H of vaporization. So delta H of vaporization will be 1625 Kelvin into 2.303 into 8.314 Joule per Kelvin. Joule per Kelvin per mole. Okay, so Kelvin and Kelvin inverse get cancelled. Final answer we will get in what? In Joule per mole. The final answer of delta H of vaporization is going to be Okay, it is going to be plus plus three one plus three one 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 four three one 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 four joule joule per mole. I have to divide it by thousand, so it will become plus thirty one point one kilojoule. So, what is the correct answer? Correct answer is option C. Okay, let us see the next one. Okay, so by the way, this was a very good question. It was from Atkins. Okay, 17, the correct order of molar absorbance for the complexes. Molar absorbance is directly proportional to molar absorbance is directly proportional to the intensity of complexes. Always remember, charge transfer complexes have maximum intensity. Then comes Spin, spin allowed, Laporte partly allowed. Okay, this is seen in mostly which complexes? Tetrahedral complexes. Next is spin, spin allowed and Laporte forbidden. Spin allowed, Laporte forbidden. And last will be spin forbidden, Laporte forbidden. These are what? These are Based on the selection rules, there are two selection rules. One is called a spin selection rule. What is the meaning of that? Delta S should be equal to zero. Change in spin should be equal to zero. And Laporte selection rule states that that delta L should be plus or minus one. Okay, if that transition takes place between 2D orbitals, okay, these are set of T2G orbitals, okay, where L is what? For S, P, D, F, 0, 1, 2, 3. L is, for D it is 2. Okay, so it is going to remain the same, the L value is same. So, if we do a DD transition, delta L is going to be 0, which violates the Laporte selection rule. Laporte selection rule says that it should be plus or minus 1. 
Okay, now let us see for all the complexes. K minu 4, the color, the purple color in K minu 4 is due to what? Is due to charge transfer. So, first option will be maximum. So, you can start eliminating the options. B and D are incorrect. A can be correct. C can be correct. Next is MN2 plus. MN2 plus is D5. Okay, MN2 plus is D5 complex. In D5 complex, if I draw, okay, here already the, it is Laporte forbidden because ZD transition is possible. So, it is what? It is spin forbidden. Sorry, it is Laporte forbidden. Now, let also see, let us see for spin. Here, if we see total spin is how much? 5 unpaired electrons. So, 5 into half is 5 by 2. Let's say this is S1. Final spin will be, suppose I move this electron here. Now, there are only 3 unpaired electrons. So, this will be 3 by 2. So, final is 3 by 2. So, spin is changed. So, delta S is not equal to 0. So, this is Laporte forbidden, spin forbidden. So, this will be least. Okay, MN2 plus will be least. So, where the 2 is last? Here 2 is last and here 2 is last. Okay, so now we have to compare between 4 and 3. Now, third one, if you see, it is a tetrahedral complex. Okay, hybridization is sp3, the weak field ligand. So, next will be third one and then MN, then will come Ti H2O6 3 plus. Okay, here if you see in Ti H2O6 3 plus, how many electrons are present? Titanium, scandium, titanium. So, it is D2, S2. Three electrons are removed. So, two are removed from this. It is D1. So, there is only one electron. So, if I move here, initially spin was half. Now, even if I move here, spin is still the same. So, that is what? That is an example of spin. Spin allowed and Laporte forbidden. Tetrahedral is, tetrahedral is spin allowed and Laporte partly allowed. Okay, so then third one will be what? It will be 4. So, 1 greater than 3 greater than 4 greater than 2. So, the correct answer is going to be A is incorrect. Correct answer is option C. 1, 3, 4, 2. The structure type for this complex is, for this what we have to do? We have to count the total valence electrons. This you have to remember, if the total valence electron count is 14n plus 2, it is Closo. If it is 14n plus 4, it is Nido. 14n plus 6, Arachno. 14n plus 8, it is Hypo. So, first we will count the total valence electrons. Ni5, CO12, 2 minus. Okay, what is N in this? N is the central. Okay, the metal atoms that are present or metal ions that are present. Nickel, nickel belongs to. Electronic configuration is D8S2. The total electrons are 10. 10 into 5 plus 1 carbonyl gives 2, two electrons. 2 into 12 plus 2 minus 10 pi the 50 plus 12 to the 24 plus 2. This will be 50 plus 24. 74 plus 2 is 76. Now first you do 14N. 14N is 14 into 5. Okay, you can see there are 5 metal ions. So, N is 5. 14, 5 are 70. If you compare 70 plus what you do, if you do plus 6, then you will get 76. So, this belongs to which category? This belongs to 14N plus 6. So, it is going to be Arachno. Correct answer is Arachno. Next one. Pentapeptide yields the following fragment. This is very simple. Four fragments are obtained. What we have to do? We have to identify the correct sequence. So one by one check for the fragment and their order. Alanine valine. Alanine valine where it is present. Here it is valine alanine. This is incorrect. Alanine valine. This can be correct. Here also alanine valine is present. This can be correct. 
here alanine lysine is present. This is incorrect. Two options are eliminated from the first fragment itself. This is done. Next is lysine glycine. Lysine glycine, yes. Here lysine glycine, correct. Okay, next is glycine alanine. Okay, glycine alanine, yes. Glycine alanine is present here. Here there is no glycine alanine. There is glycine lysine. This is incorrect. Last one, valanine glycine. Valanine glycine. So all the fragments can be obtained from this uh, peptide chain. Now the question is, how can I get so many fragments from a single peptide chain? So that is not going to be true. If there is C is the fragment, there will be multiple. Okay, there will not be only one fragment. There will be like some hundred or thousand or n number of fragments. So that is how we are getting different different fragments. Correct answer for this is option C. Next is identify the major product P, which is the first reaction. First reaction is sodium in liquid ammonia. This is what this is Birch reduction. Okay, Birch reduction. What will be the product form? These are both electron donating groups. And we know in electron donating groups, the pi bonds are closer to the electron donating group like this. And other pi bond is exactly parallel to the, the, pres to the pi bond that is present at the carbon attached to electron donating group. So this is the first step, Birch reduction. Second is H2. RH PPH3 thrice Cl. This is which catalyst? This is Wilkinson catalyst. This is Wilkinson catalyst. This is used to convert alkene to alkane and it selectively reduces less substituted alkenes. This is more substituted, so this will not be reduced. This will be reduced. Okay, this will be reduced, and what we will get here? Hydrogen will be attached. Okay, so this I can write again. Here, double bond CH3, CH3. Just by this step, you can. Uh, now what we have to do next step is pH3, THF, H2O2, NaOH. This is hydroboration oxidation. So which rule is followed here? It is anti-Markovnikov rule. But both are identical. It is a symmetrical alkene. So we can add at any place. And it, it is what? It is a syn addition. What is the meaning of syn addition? Syn addition means hydrogen and OH of water are added from the same side of the double bond. Means they are going to be cis. Okay, you can eliminate option C and D because here water is added at this. What they have done is in option C and D they have reduced this bond. This is not going to be correct. Here if you see OH and H, they are cis. Here it is. OH and H in the first case it is. This is below the plane. This is above the plane. So here it is trans. So this is not going to be the correct answer. Correct answer will be option B. Next one. The, which of the following metallocene has maximum unpaired electrons? So what is a metallocene? Metallocene is a organometallic compound. It is also called as what? It is also called as sandwich compound. Okay, why it is called sandwich compound? Because metal is present in between and there is two CP ligands above and below. What is CP? It is cyclopentadienyl ring. like this so this is like the vegetables and this you can consider or imagine like the two bread slices that is why it is similar to sandwich so it is also called a sandwich compound 
Now, how do you fill the electrons? This is what this is the molecular orbital diagram for metallocenes. Okay, basically, only the section that is filled, uh, the electrons are filled here, metal electrons are filled here. Okay, in all the cases, what is the structure of CP? CP is this cyclopenta dienyl ring. This is negative. So, in all the cases, what is going to be the oxidation state of this? X minus 2 is equal to 0. X will be plus 2. So, we have to write the electron configuration for all the plus 2 metals. Option A is vanadium 2 plus. B is iron 2 plus. C is manganese 2 plus. D is nickel 2 plus. Vanadium 2 plus is scandium, titanium, vanadium, D3. This is D6, this is D5, this is D8. Okay, we will start filling the electrons. One thing that you have to remember is, okay, these two orbitals are much higher as compared to the other, these three set. So what will happen in all this A, B and D, this will be filled first and then this will be filled. Except for Mn. Mn what will happen? We will see. So here three electrons. One, two and three. So here there are three unpaired electrons. Fe2 plus if I want to fill. One, two, three. I will not go above. I will come here. Four, five and six. Zero unpaired electrons. D5. This is an exceptional case that you have to remember. Add a star mark. Add in your notes. It is very important. One, two, three. Here it will go to the higher level. So here there are five unpaired electrons. If you do pairing, then what you will get? You will get only one unpaired electron. That will be incorrect. The correct answer is there are five unpaired electrons. Nickel, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. How many unpaired electrons? Two. So which has maximum unpaired electrons? Manganese. Manganese is the correct answer. Next one, the number of shared vertices in ortho, pyro, ortho silicate, pyro silicate, cyclic silicate and sheet silicate respectively are. So this is the question that was asked in gate 2023, this year's paper that was held on 5th of February. I have added this purposely because similar type of question can be asked. So let us see. For this, you must know the structures of the silicates. What is the basic repeating unit it is SiO4 4 minus okay this is what this is ortho silicate and what is the meaning of uh, the shared vertices of oxygen in SiO4 there is only single unit cell so here the Z value or the shared number or neighboring matter is zero because all the oxygens are alone what is this yellow sphere yellow sphere is oxygen and dot is silicon. This is the structure. It is tetrahedral. This silicon is represented by this dot. And oxygen is represented by this, this yellow spheres that you can see. This is what this is oxygen. So in ortho silicate it is zero. In pyro silicate you can see there is one oxygen that is common. So Z is 1. Cyclic silicates, you have to consider only one unit. Let's say we are considering this unit. One is this and another is this. So Z is equal to 2. Here if I consider, let's say, this one. 1, 2 and 3 oxygen are shared. So here Z is equal to 3. So the correct answer is 0, 1, 2 and 3. 3. Correct answer is option D. Next is equilibrium constant for this reaction is so at two temperatures one is 673. So we can write like this lower temperature T1 is 673 Kelvin. Kp at lower temperature Kp1 I can write is 1.64 into 10 raised to 4. What is Kp? Kp is the equilibrium constant. 
नेक्स्ट इज टी टू टी टू इज हायर टेम्परेचर सेवन सेवेंटी थ्री कैलविन के पी टू दिस इज हाउ मच जीरो पॉइंट वन फोर फोर जीरो पॉइंट वन फोर फोर इंटू टेन रेस टू फोर ओके सो वॉट वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट दी एंथल पी ऑफ फॉर्मेशन फॉर वन मोल ओके वन मोल ऑफ अमोनिया okay which uh, isotherm we are going which equation we are going to use it is called as van t hoff isotherm van t hoff isotherm equation okay what is that ln of kp at higher temperature 2 divided by kp at lower temperature 1 is equal to delta h of enthalpy of formation divided by r 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2. T1 is lower temperature. T2 is higher temperature. Substitute all the values. Kp2 is what? Kp2 is this. 0.144 into 10 raised to 4. Kp1 is Kp1 is this. 1.64 into 10 raised to 4 is equal to delta Hf. We have to find out. R is 8.314 joule per kelvin per mole. One by lower temperature is 673 minus higher temperature is 773. So you solve this. Delta H F is going to be minus 105216 joule. In kilo joule, it will be 105.22 kilo joule. and if you have uh, read this answer and you have marked the option as a that is going to be incorrect why because in the reaction you can see here there are two moles of ammonia that are formed so this is for two moles of ammonia we want for one mole of ammonia so we will divide this by 2 divided by 2 this will be minus 52.61 kilo joule correct answer is option d Okay, and not option A. Next one is specific conductance for a saturated solution. K of solution is given. That is, three point four one into ten raised to minus four Simon meter inverse. Next is K of pure water, or I can say solvent is given. It is one point six zero into ten raised to minus four Simon meter inverse. Next temperature is given 298 Kelvin. Lambda infinity molar conductance at infinite dilution is given 139.3 Simon meter square mole inverse. Molar mass of AgCl is given. That is 143.32. Okay, which formula we are going to use? What we have to find out? We have to find out the solubility. S is missing. So let us first write down the normal formula. Lambda m molar conductance is equal to K by C. Okay, where all these are in SI units. Okay, K is the specific conductance, and here K is what K is of the solute. Okay, but we are considering infinite dilution. So at infinite dilution, what happens? at infinite dilution lambda m will become lambda infinity m and concentration will become solubility okay concentration will become solubility so lambda m infinity this is known to us we don't know k of solute divided by c concentration will be solubility we want solubility that will be k of solute divided by lambda m infinity okay k of this is additive in nature k of solution is equal to k of solute plus k of solvent here it is water so we want for solute so k of solute is going to be k of solution minus k of water so here this i can replace it by k of solution minus k of water 
now we have to substitute k of solution is how much water it is given 1.60 minus for k of sorry solution is 3.41 minus solvent is 1.60 into 10 raised to minus 4 time in meter inverse Okay, divided by what is the unit of this lambda m infinity? It is 139.3 time in meter square mole inverse. Okay, meter square will go to the numerator, it will become meter raised to it will become meter raised to minus 2. Okay, meter raised to minus 2, meter raised to minus 1 will become meter raised to minus 3. Okay, Simon and Simon get cancelled. Mole inverse numerator, it will become mole. Okay, this is mole per meter cube. In the react in the question, if you see it is decimeter cube. So let us first con convert meter cube meter is to minus three into decimeter is to minus three. One decimeter is ten raised to minus one meter. So one meter is 10 decimeter okay one meter cube is going to be cube so 10 raised to 3 decimeter cube one meter raised to minus 3 will be 10 raised to minus 3 okay what i've done one meter is 10 me 10 decimeter one meter cube is 10 raised to 3 decimeter cube Okay, 1 meter cube is 10 raised to 3 decimeter cube. So, 1 meter raised to minus 3 will be 10 raised to minus 3 decimeter raised to minus 3. Okay, this is 1 meter raised to minus 3 is 10 raised to minus 3 decimeter raised to minus 3. So, we have multiplied this. So, what we will get? 1 point minus if we do it is 1.81 into 10 raised to minus 4 into 10 raised to minus 3 decimeter raised to minus 3 mole that is mole per decimeter cube is nothing but molar molarity unit of molarity divided by 139.3 okay this if you solve the final answer for this it will come out to be 10 raised to minus 9 it comes out to be 1.3 into 10 raised to minus 9 decimeter cube mole mole per decimeter cube okay, i can write like this okay but in the question if you see it is given gram okay so what we have to do we have to multiply it by its molar mass it is given 143.32 gram per mole now mole and per mole get cancelled answer is in gram per decimeter cube this answer comes out to be 1.86 into 10 raised to minus 7 gram per decimeter cube and I am really sorry that I have not mentioned this option. This is actually 10 raised to minus 7. Okay, I will write down the answer here. Okay, the final answer is 1.86 into 10 raised to minus 7 gram per decimeter cube let us see the next one the most stable chair conformation of the following compound is now if you just see the options and you randomly mark that both the methyl groups we say that the bulky groups okay bulky groups like methyl should be occupying which position equatorial position why because there is no one three axial strain in equatorial position Okay, there is no 1 3 axial stain, so it is what it is more stable. Okay, but if you mark this option A, this is going to be not correct, it's going to be incorrect. Why? Because we have to check the stereochemistry as well. I will start numbering from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. First position tertiary butyl is above, in all the cases, it is above the plane. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स थर्ड पोजिशन मिथाइल इज बिलो द प्लेन हियर मिथाइल इज ड्रॉन अबाउ द प्लेन दिस इज रॉन्ग फोर्थ पोजिशन मिथाइल इज अबाउ द प्लेन हियर इट इज ड्रॉन बिलो द प्लेन तो ए इज इन करेक्ट बी ऑप्शन इफ वी सी दिस थर्ड पोजिशन मिथाइल इज बिलो द प्लेन दैट इज इन करेक्ट ओके दिस अबाउ द प्लेन इज करेक्ट सो दिस इज ऑल्सो इन करेक्ट थर्ड ऑप्शन हियर मिथाइल इज बिलो द प्लेन and this is above the plane so this is the only correct option d option if we see third position methyl is below the plane is correct but here it is incorrect okay so now you might be wondering why this is stable okay both are axial position suppose i draw the other isomer okay here i have drawn this isomer that is okay me Above the plane, this M is below the plane, and here we have tertiary butyl. Let us do ring flipping and see what we get. Ring flipping means this portion will come down and this portion will go above. Okay, so methyl is above the plane; it will remain above the plane. Axial group becomes equatorial. So here it will become like this. Then next. Here methyl will become above the plane. Okay, methyl is above the plane. Sorry, methyl is below the plane, so it will be like this. So here, after methyl one carbon, there is tertiary butyl group which is above the plane. So this is at the axial position. Okay, although both the methyls are equatorial, but the bulkiest group is at the axial position, which will make this conformation less stable. Okay, so that is why this is the more stable conformation, and the correct answer is going to be option C. Correct answer is option C. Let us see next one. Identify the major product of the following reaction. Okay, so first step is this is the base Na plus and H minus. Base will abstract this proton. It will form S minus. Okay, now there are two possibilities: one, two, three, four, five. six membered ring can be formed or seven membered ring can be formed six membered is more stable than seven membered ring so c and d are incorrect more stable will be six membered ring so this is above the plane so this will attack from here and this will open up what we will get we will get this six membered ring is above the plane here it is above the plane above the plane okay now what we have to check is we have to check this rs for this here this is a chiral center so this is going to be 1 okay 1 this is going to be first priority hydrogen will be 4 here there are three hydrogens so this will be 3 and here we have one hydrogen and one carbon and one oxygen so this is going to be 2 Okay, so one, two, 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 three. It is what it is. S. The okay, fourth priority group is below the plane, so it is S. Now, what you have to do, you have to find out the RS nomenclature for both these compounds. Okay, for both these compounds, if we found find out, let's say this is one. CH three is going to be. This is going to be four. Okay, one, four. Yeah, there are three hydrogens, so this is going to be two, and this will be three. But here, if you see, fourth priority group is in plane, so we have to do we have to do even number of changes. Four is here. We will replace four and one. We will replace two and three. So fourth position comes here. First position will come in plane, and here above the plane, two will come, and here there will be three. So one, two, 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 three. If you do, it is S. So the correct answer is A. Same way, if you find out for B, the nomenclature it is going to be R. So that is not correct. Correct answer for this question it is going to be option A. Next one, which of the following is a false statement about salt bridge? Salt bridge prevents the diffusion of ions. That is correct. True. Salt bridge separates the two half shell, but still. the electric contact between the two is maintained how it is maintained by flow of ions 
Okay, so this is also true. Third one, the transport number of ions that is T plus of K time. Let's say we take KCl, so T plus of K plus and T minus of Cl minus is going to be same. This is also a true statement. Last one, the potential developed between the two half cells due to salt bridge is called liquid liquid junction potential. This is going to be false because the salt bridge is used to eliminate liquid liquid junction potential and the junction potential is not caused because of this uh, junction liquid liquid junction potential is not caused because of the salt bridge. So this is the correct answer option D. It is the false statement. Next is question number 28. This is based on Hammond's postulate. Okay, first we have to uh, find out the stability between two isomers R1 and R2 and also we have to determine the stability between P1 and P2. This is a graph of energy versus reaction progress. So according to Hammond's postulate, major product is the one which is closer to the transition state which is closer to the transition states. So if we compare between R1 and R2, which is going to be more stable, R2 is close, lower in energy. So R2 is more stable than R1. Okay, R2 is more stable than R1. So B can be the correct answer or A can be the correct answer. C and D are incorrect. Next, if you consider P2 and P1, Okay, if I draw like this, the energy of P2 is higher, P1 is lower. If you mark P1 is more stable than P2 and if you mark the option as A, then your answer will be incorrect. Why? Because for this, here if you see activation energy, let's say Ea1 is much higher, it is far from the product. Whereas here if I see the Ea, it is lower. This is Ea2. This is lower because this is closer to the product. That is what is the statement of Hammond's postulate. Okay, so what is the correct answer? Which is going to be more stable? P2 is going to be more stable. Okay, P1 is less stable than P2. So the correct answer is going to be option B. 29. Which of the following violates the rule of mutual exclusion principle? What is this principle? Let us first see that for molecules having COS, if a molecule is IR active, then it is going to be Raman or microwave inactive. And if it is IR inactive, then it will be Raman active or we can say microwave active. Okay, so Raman active and Raman inactive and Raman active. So this is shown by molecules having COS. So we have to find out which violates this rule, which means in which molecule COS is absent. If you see CO2, CO2 is linear. If I draw this point here, if I go, I get oxygen. Opposite side also, I get oxygen. So COS is present, so this is not the correct answer. CS2 is same as that of CO2, so this is also not correct. Here also COS will be present. Third one is oxygen. This point will be the COS, center of symmetry. So this is also not correct. SO2 geometry is bent like this. There is one lone pair. So here below if I go, I get o oxygen. Exactly opposite here, there is nothing. So the correct answer for this is going to be SO2. Last option, in which of the following carbocation has the longest half-life? Okay, half-life means time taken for 50% of the compound to be reacted. So half-life, if the half-life is more, what is the meaning of that? It is more stable. Okay, it is taking more time to react, which means it is already stable. That is why it is taking more time to react. In all these options, which is going to be the major option, which is the most stable conformation, it is going to be most stable carbocation. It is going to be option A.
Why? Because of the concept of dancing resonance. Okay, if you see this cyclopropane that is attached to a carbocation like this, this is one conformation like this. Okay, this is exactly cutting the p orbital. So, this is called a bisected conformation bisected configuration there is one more configuration that is possible ph2 plus here you can see this orbital is perpendicular at, a, at an angle of 90 degree to the p orbital this is going to be less stable okay why what is the reason for this here in the bisected conformation here because of the ring stain Okay, here the bond angle is 60, but sp3, the ideal bond angle, it should be 109.5 degree. So, because of the ring strain, ring strain, to release the strain, it will donate electrons to the empty p orbital of the carbocation, making it the most stable conformation. Okay, that is why option A is correct. If the structure given was something like this, okay, perpendicular. Okay, perpendicular configuration is given like this, then the correct answer would have been option B because of what resonance. Okay, if this was given because here, okay, here if you see, here since the orientation is not proper, it cannot donate to anyone. Okay, so there is no stability. Okay, but here what is the correct answer? It is going to be option. Uh, correct answer is option A. I hope you have understood this uh, 30 questions, 11 to 30. Remaining questions we will see in the next video. Thank you.